Hello, this is Sasha, your favorite sexuality coach. <laughs> and I want to talk today about female masturbation as the ultimate act of feminist rebellion. So, uh, I know it sounds weird, but let me tell you a little story about female pleasure first, so that you see what I mean by this. Uh, when I am talking about this, I am talking about the modern era. I'm not talking about, you know, the time when there was a matriarchal uh, kind of society. I am talking about the modern era. An era where women were stripped away from their sexuality. Women were taught that our bodies were dangerous. Our bodies were for male consumption and female pleasure and female orgasm was but a myth. Something like a fairy tale that doesn't really exist. And why do I say this? I say this because not so long ago, women who dared to experience pleasure in their body who had orgasms or who were caught masturbating or who actually had um, pleasure while they were with their partners could be accused of being witches they were accused of of having the devil inside of them and they could be punished and even murder for this hideous crime. Later on, a step forward um, a couple of hundred of years, these same women would be accused of having a mental illness. So women learn that feeling anything at all in their bodies was forbidden and could mean ending up with the most terrible punishments. Um, of course, there were always concubines, sex workers that challenged somehow this norm. Or so we want to think when we idealize them. But in reality, they were just playing the fantasy for men. The fantasy of, you know, the, the stallion that makes them see the stars. It was just about male pleasure still. Most of the time. Of course, there were exceptions. There have always been powerful women here and there. But I am talking about the the uh, general population. Women in general were taught to be extremely afraid of their sexuality. And you don't need to go too far in time to find this kind of behaviors still. You might think, well, yeah, that happens in underdeveloped countries, but Western countries, are not that way anymore. You would be surprised. <laughs> you would be so terribly surprised. Women still in our time have told me things like they are afraid of touching their bodies because they feel like they are kind of betraying their partners if they do, or that it's dirty and it's the lowest of lowest that they can go, and that they feel sinful and dirty and disgusting by touching their bodies and by trying to find pleasure on their own. So yeah, it's not something that distant away. Just as it is not distant to think of these women that taught or were taught to believe that Sexuality was their marital duty, 
that they had to suffer through it and that they would breathe in, in relief when their partners uh, grew old and had less stamina. I'm sure you know women that still believe that way. I know I do. There are so many women that believe that sex was meant to be for male pleasure, that women enjoy less than men and that women are not wired to feel pleasure and that sexuality is a transaction that you give in order to get something from men. It sounds scary just to think about how many women still think that way and they do because they have been conditioned i'm not judging them at all i am loving them because somehow at any point in my life i was them i believed in those things or I, at least a part of me did and i have known people so close to me and so loved that still believe that way. So you can feel compassion for them. It's not meant to be a judgment. It's meant to be an invitation to rebel against this belief that has kept women disempowered and disconnected from their birthright, which is their pleasure. But why is pleasure important? Pleasure is important because, first of all, nature modeled that to us. It's not by chance that we have an organ that is merely, uniquely designed to bring us pleasure, which is the clitoris. Um, which is funny because I learned about the clitoris just like 20 years ago. People wouldn't speak about it. Actually, I remember this movie in which, when I was a teenager, in which people would be laughing about how surreal and how uh, few men have found the G spot and they didn't even speak about the clitoris. Like it was not even in their vocabulary back then. Eventually, it became common knowledge. But in a way that it's also kind of masculine, right? It's like, yeah, the clitoris is an organ that you just drop very quickly and then you get pleasure as fast as a man. Three minutes with this super amazing machine that goes and gives you pleasure in three minutes. And then again, we are conditioning our sexuality to male standards. And we're losing in that way. So one of the most important moments in the history of female empowerment was the discovery or the invention of the um, contraception pill. When that took place, women discovered that they could have sex for fun, not just to procreate with their partners, to have a good time. So wait a minute, does it mean sex can be fun? Hmm. So women started questioning their sexuality. The very first books um, written by women exploring and interviewing other women about their bodies, about their pleasure, started being written back then. We're speaking about the 60s and 70s. It began a wave of transformation in our consciousness and in the way in which we perceive the world. Because the way in which we perceive our bodies and the way in which we perceive our, our relationships is pretty much expensive towards the way in which we perceive our reality in all layers. So 
what came after that was the discovery of the clitoris, like the um, uh, the scientific community started to embrace the possibility of women having um, having bodies that didn't necessarily mean that they were other than men, but that they were unique in their composition and purpose. Because up to that moment, male bodies were considered the norm and female bodies were considered the other, different than, different from. So we started claiming our space and claiming the fact that our bodies were not the other, but that they were a body on its own with its right and its worthiness and its deserving. So we started wondering if our place was really meant to be uh, Aaron in relation to a man. You know, do I really need to be somebody's wife, somebody's daughter, somebody's sister, somebody's somebody's? Or can I just be me? Who I am without thinking of being somebody's anything, somebody's mother and somebody's lover and somebody's nothing. I can be just me. And that's where pleasure enters. When we reclaim our bodies for ourselves, we start reclaiming our place in life. Because there is another part that we, that we have been taught and that has affected us deeply when it comes to the way in which we approach the world. And it is the idea that pleasure is something that somebody gives to us as a gift that is granted. And when it is not granted, we grow angry and resentful. And we we'll try to get somebody else to grant it to us, right? So we go back to this point in which we are somebody's something. So this new revolution, the revolution of self-pleasure in the revolution of masturbation, it's about women reclaiming their sexual sovereignty, their sexual independence, and saying, I can do that on my own. I don't need a man to have an orgasm. I don't need a partner to have an orgasm. And it doesn't mean that we don't want to be around men. It just means that we can do it as full individuals not as half-assed individuals, that we can be, um, I call it a whole fruit and not a half fruit. So I can be my own person and therefore desire who I want to be surrounded by, who I want to be mated with. And this quest of becoming our own person of not being somebody else's woman, take us back into ourself, take us back into our sexuality. So, speaking about this new empowerment, we found that we have this organ that it just, uh, its main function is to give us pleasure, right? But it's not the only part of us that is created to give us pleasure. We are to be careful of the belief that it's just about the clitoris and female orgasms are just this way and you just have to do and then you have to follow these rules because it brings us back, in, back into this getting into a box. I want to challenge you to step out of this box, to explore your clitoris, of course, 
and its capacity to bring you great pleasure, but also your capacity to explore pleasure with um, vaginal stimulation, which is possible. Cervical stimulation, breast stimulation, oral stimulation, skin stimulation, energy stimulation, whatever feels challenging. There is a magical, amazing capacity in women's body, bodies to experience pleasure in so many, many, many ways. So don't let anybody tell you that female pleasure is just about this part, because that's what they have told us all along for so many centuries, that women, women have only so much capacity to feel, to enjoy, to think, to move, to do, to act. So in the realm of our being, as much as in the realm of our sexuality, don't let anybody tell you what can be and cannot be done. Explore your own edges. And that is what masturbation is about. Exploring your own edges. What it feels like to be you, what it feels like to express your sexuality, howling naked to the moon, to express your sexuality dancing seductively in front of a mirror, to express your sexuality eating um, melted chocolate uh, naked, just exploring pleasure as a rebellious act to explore how alive can you feel. And uh, how further can you take your aliveness? Because it's yours. It's your energy to reclaim. So welcome to this new revolution. Welcome to the revolution of pleasure. We are reclaiming our place. We are reclaiming our being and our essence. And we are reclaiming our voices and our spaces. I hope that this resonates with you. I have another podcast about um, self-pleasure as nurture, which is pretty much about um, self-pleasure as an exploration of your genius, of how self-pleasure can bring you into a place of clarity and empowerment. Um, that is an interview with an amazing coach called Michelle Casey. I have another um, podcast about the JDEC and what it has done for um, sense, make, making my vagina more sensitive and how it can work for you. And I am working on another podcast about how to explore different kinds of pleasure during masturbation. I hope that this is useful for you. Remember to follow me on my, on my web page and subscribe to my channels so that you keep on listening to this amazing content. See you soon.